Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's time again for our new items of the week. Got a ton of great stuff here in front of me, got some cool new stuff from Benchmade, some new Kershaws, as well as a couple new brands, or at least one new brand here. It's actually a spin-off of Artisan Cutlery called CJRB, which is going to be a fantastic new budget knife option. Those are going to be really cool. We got all that and more. Let's get into it. So the first thing I've got to mention are our new Knife Center exclusive Battle Wash Benchmade bug outs. Now we did a full video on these yesterday. You can click the link in the corner to see that and see all the cool details with this. But the moral of the story, so to speak, are these Battle Wash handles. Now Benchmade have not, this is a new process for them. They've not put it out on any other knife yet. Knife Center is the first place that you can get any of these battle wash handles and they are debuting on these bug outs. Really cool, what it, it's still a grivery handle just like the rest of them, um, but it's a red base and has black coating uh, on the top of it. That's kind of stonewashed out so to speak. Not so much stonewashed because you do have kind of solid black in here, but it's weathered and so you see that red underneath. Now we've had some questions as to what that coating, like how they get that black on there. Benchmade's holding that really tight to their vest. They're kind of keeping that a, a trade secret since this is a new process for them. Um, but all we can tell you is they look fantastic and they're gonna look better and better the more you use them. Really cool. Black Cerakote blade is available as well as the satin blade. And they're already moving really quick. I can tell you right here, we got three people in this room. All three of us have already put in our, our own pre-orders for it. We're really excited about them. So, like I said, that debuted yesterday. You could see our full video on that, but let's keep it going with another Benchmade, and this is the Gold Class Cigar Cutter. Now, they've had a, a version of this cigar cutter before, but the Gold Class, what it does is it upgrades the handle material on it. This is called uh, no, or sorry, Raphir Noble, and this is the Black Waves pattern of that material. Essentially what that is, let me close the blade up here real quick. Um, you have metallic mesh that's suspended in resin. You have brass and bronze. And as you move it around, it looks really cool. You get a really cool 3D effect, kind of like Kiranite, but you have a bit more of that metallic sheen to it. Um, you can actually pick out the weave of it, which is pretty cool. Um, so each one is going to be a little bit different, but you can see right here, we've got the bronze. Is it bronze? Let me check on that real quick. Do, 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 do. Yeah, <laughs> bronze and brass. And you can see both of those tones here. You have the yellower brass and the redder bronze right here. Like I said, each one's gonna be a little bit different. Now it has a, uh, and actually it's, it's a spring loaded blade. It's an automatic axis, but it doesn't deploy fully. What you do is you just pull, that, pull back on that axis bar and the blade pops up. It's pretty cool when it's closed too. You can actually see the Benchmade logo right through that hole, which is pretty cool. Pop it up, S90V steel, and it's chisel ground from one side, and then you have a secondary edge right on the end. But it's really satisfying. You can just stick your stogie right in there, snip it, and you're ready to puff. Really cool piece, even cooler, I think, with this uh, with this no Rafer Noble handle. Very satisfying, I must say. And it comes with a nice uh, leather pocket slip as well. Brown leather with some pretty cool blue thread on it. It's a pretty cool little piece. Um, and I can actually see this working well as an impromptu strop. If this is part of your EDC carry, you can just pop out the, uh, the, uh, the tool, strop your blade, and you're good to go. And like the tool itself, this is also made in America, which is pretty cool. So the pricing on this is up there. This is a premium item. And keep in mind that all the prices I'm going to throw out to you right now are approximate. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not necessarily going to round up to our 95 cents or whatnot. And these prices, of course, can change with time. But this one right here is $450. So now let's get into the Kershaws. First are a couple of Emerson models, which are actually upgraded versions of previously existing models. And now these two right here feature D2 tool steel. So it's a definite upgrade in edge retention from the 8CR13 MOV that these usually come with. We've got the CQC 4K XL. Nice long blade, almost four inches there. Hollow grind, you got horizontal grain here and some stone washing on the hollow grind itself. And this one has a lot of, a good amount of weight to it. A good heft, feels really solid. It's a stainless steel frame lock. So you've got that strength and you've got that weight behind it as well. So it doesn't feel flimsy at all. It really does inspire confidence, I think. 
That's the same story with the CQC11K, now with D2 steel. It doesn't feel quite as heavy as the previous one. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. It might be a little bit due to the size. Um, there's a little bit more G or uh, yeah, G10 on the front of this than there is on this upswept Skinner profile. Um, but again, hollow grind. This one's fully stonewashed. And both of these have that key Emerson feature of the wave-shaped opener. So not only does it work when it's open as a nice thumb ramp there, but that hook is designed to catch the hem of your pocket as you're drawing it from the pocket, and it'll deploy the blade in one smooth motion, almost like a fixed blade. That, that's the kind of quickness you can expect. You can just rip it out of your pocket, not rip, but you know what I mean, and it's ready to go. But if you'd rather open it more deliberately, they both have that ambidextrous thumb disc mounted to the spine of the blade as well. So the prices of these have gone up too versus the standard 8CR13 versions. Uh, we're at $58 for this and $55 for the Upswept Hunter profile. So this next one you may remember from our SHOT Show coverage earlier this, earlier this year, but the Kershaw Mixtape is now available as well. Now this is a really cool budget blade offering. It's just over $25 bucks right now. And it's got a cool sheep's foot profile to it. You do have a slight bit of belly, so it's not a true sheep's foot. Um, but you have a flat grind along here and a long, pretty deep swedge along the spine. So that's going to be a pretty efficient shape, actually, when you're moving through material because you have all of that relief there. Creates, you can think of it kind of like a wing. It's more aerodynamic. And as you're curving through material, it's going to be a lot more efficient, especially because of how deep that swedge actually is. Like those Emersons, we've got a uh, ambidextrous thumb disc here. No flipper, no wave opener, so it is a bit more of a deliberate open, but you can still flick it open pretty easily. You can see the pocket clip here actually goes into the handle too. So they gave this thing its name because of this cutout here in the front handle. Kind of looks like an old cassette tape. That's why they called it the mixtape. Some of you guys might be too young out there to know what a mixtape is, but you know, whatever, that's fine. Still a really cool knife. Um, G10 handles, no, sorry, GFN handles, um, and we've got stonewash finish on the blade. We're back to 8CR13 MOV on this, and that stonewash pattern matches on the pocket clip, and you get a nice liner lock to lock that guy up. Pretty compact to carry, too. Would fit really nicely in your pocket. You don't have any kind of wild shape sticking out, so it's a, a fairly conservative shape, but a really good utility shape as well. Just over three inches of blade, too. Uh, so a little bit over, so if you are living somewhere where you need a sub 3 inch blade, it's going to be a little bit too much for you. Now next up, where the mixtape was more of a conservative design, the Kershaw Parsec is more futuristic, kind of sci-fi in nature. And this one starts at $41.95 or $42. This is a KVT flipped, flipped, <laughs> sorry, not a flipped, this is a KVT equipped flipper, or we'll just say it's KVT flipped. Maybe we'll coin a new phrase here, here while we're at it. But we've got a cool blue pivot, nice and oversized. It's adjustable from the back side. And you've got matching backspacers that match that color there. Flips really nicely. And you got a modified Warncliffe profile, 8CR13 again. And this is a stonewashed PVD finish across the whole thing. Again, 8CR13, and you have a stainless steel frame with a frame lock. And they're kind of hammering home this sort of cutout aesthetic. You've seen it in the mixtape, you see it here, and you're gonna see it in the next knife as well. You do have a reversible pocket clip on this knife, so you can carry it either side. And one thing, if you look at the back, that almost looks like a bottle opener. And as much as I like to joke that everything's got a bottle opener, this is just aesthetic. That's not actually a bottle opener on the back of this one, but maybe they should do a special edition with that, who knows. Now this next one out of the new Kershaw drop is probably the one that's generating the most buzz, and that's the Kershaw Static. This is KVT flipped, like the other one, so you get some pretty good action on it. And one thing that a lot of people have been saying immediately is that it reminds them of the Gerber flat iron. And I can see why. It's a similar shape. The price is almost identical. We're, just, we're at about $39 on this. Keeping all those things in mind, you can probably expect to see a, a straight up versus video from, the, from us on these two knives sometime in the near future. So just keep that uh, on your horizon. Again, you see a little cutout there. Uh, stainless steel frame lock. We've got a deep carry clip on this one. A little bit sticks up, it's fairly deep carry, but you do get the tip of the handle there. Um, and you can reverse it as well. Now it's sort of a smaller handle. It's kind of a three and a half finger grip for my hands but you have a nice big finger choil up here, so you can choke up and get a full grip on this knife 
and this thing is is ready to just cut. I could like immediately when I hold this, I feel like I should be ripping through cardboard really nicely, really easily with this knife. It is a flat grind, but it's finished very nicely too. You got a nice uh, chamfered edges along the spine, so you've got some jimping here to add some grip, but that's not sharp. The spine itself is not sharp. Overall, I think this is just going to be a really cool and pretty darn stylish EDC for not a whole lot of money. What I really appreciate about this design is even though it's sort of a what's thought of as a blocky blade shape, they definitely kept it from being blocky overall. You've got a little bit of a forward uh, edge here, or a, a little bit of a diagonal to the leading edge, and you've got a nice sweep leading from handle into the blade. That's something I really appreciate, and it gives this kind of square shape a bit more dynamism and a bit more motion, even when it's standing still. Speaking of not a whole lot of money, we're going to introduce to you now the CJRB line of knives that come to us from Artisan Cutlery. Now this is a new budget brand that they've released. There are five new models that have dropped right now. Each one has essentially the same different handle options to them. Uh, and they all range in price from 35, no sorry, 40 to $45. Really good deal when you consider what you're getting. And what you're getting is a knife that's made with slightly cheaper materials than the Artisan Cutlery stuff. These all have D2 steel and either G10 or carbon fiber handles, but they're put together on the same assembly line as those Artisan Cutlery knives. You've got a nice pivot, or sorry, you've got a nice bearing in the pivot that just makes these feel really good. And especially this drop point model here, which is called the Taiga. Sorry, I had to look it up there. Ever since I saw this at Blade Show this year, this is on track to being one of the top contenders for best new budget knife of the year. It's not overly ref overtly refined. It is just simple and it's just what you need. You have a flat G10 scale, open back to construction with some standoffs, and a deep, par deep carry pocket clip that's reversible, and a lanyard hole. Now, apart from that lanyard hole, which some of these have and some don't, all those features are going to be the same throughout all these knives. Same materials, same pivot, same steel, same features, just different shapes. And this drop point Taiga is going to be great for just about anything. I'm always saying that the drop point is just one of the best versatility shapes out there because this is going to be great for EDC. It's going to be a great outdoor knife on a budget. Again, only $40. Good liner lock holds it to get, holds it closed, or sorry, holds it open and it flips really nicely. You know, for, again, 40 bucks, that is impressive. These are Chinese made knives, so if that's something you wanna steer clear from, that's fine, just know that for 40 bucks, it doesn't get much better than this for this size of a knife and this type of materials. The D2 is flat ground and we have a stone washed finish. So it's gonna hold its edge for a long time and it's gonna look good for a long time because your use, the scratches as you use it are gonna blend in quite nicely to that uh, stone washed finish. Now this is the black G10 option, and as I go through the other models, you're going to see the other handle options. Next up is the Briar, which is more narrow, kind of gentlemanly, gentlemanly carry, especially in this version here that has the carbon fiber scales. And none of these models here exactly mimic some of the artisan cutlery models. These are models that were made for this new sub-brand, but this one's kind of somewhere in between the artisan shark and the Arkeo. It's that kind of vibe if you're into those knives. And this with the carbon fiber for only 45 bucks is a great way to get into that shape. Next up is the Centros, which is not a flipper. It's the only one here that is not. It has thumb studs instead, but it still has that bearing in the pivot. So it still pops open really nicely. It's got kind of a similar shape to that previous knife, sort of a long slender spear point, but you have a little bit more width here, a little bit more belly overall. And this is the blue G10 handle option. So those three blade shapes are pretty conventional, um, even though I think there is some good sex appeal to them. They're more versatile, more general purpose knives. But now we're going to get into some stuff that's a little more stylish, a little bit more of a statement. And the first is the Tala Flipper, T-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Some might say it's a sheep's foot. Some might say it's more of an angular modified Warncliffe. Whatever you call it, I think it looks really darn cool. There's this nice scoop out right here. And that feels really good if you're needing to choke up with your thumb to get behind something with the point or even choke up with your index finger. That works really well. And with this type of edge, it's going to be great for draw cuts and scoring, anything like that. Not so much belly. There is just a hint to, of belly to it, but not really a whole lot. Flat ground again, just like the rest of these. 
And the G10 handles on this model, rather than being flat, are actually contoured. And you have a nice diagonal milling pattern along it as well, which provides a good amount of grip without being too aggressive. Uh, there's definitely, you can feel it when you, when you push along it. But for most everyday uses, I don't think it's really going to impact the, you know, make too much in the way of hot spots so much. This is a deep carry pocket clip, and it is really darn deep carry. It goes right up to the edge, and it is reversible, and it's actually inset, as you can see. So it lives buried just a little bit into the handle, which is nice. Last up is another, is a great new entry into the folding pocket cleaver segment, and that's the Crag Flipper. And this one has, with the carbon fiber version, has a really cool orange anodized pivot collar that it snaps really nicely. It looks really cool. You do have a little bit of a choil here. It's not so big that I would feel comfortable putting my whole finger up in to choke up on, but you can get your fingertip in there if you're needing to do a little bit of detail work with the tip. But just like that, uh, that Kershaw flip, uh, folding cleaver from before, you can just feel the power. You feel like you just want to be ripping through some material when you hold this. And again, for the price of 40 to 45 bucks, depending on which you're getting, it's going to be hard to beat the performance and the quality you get for that amount of money right here. So that's it for CJRB. Now we're going to move on to Best Tech, which is another one of those Chinese manufacturers that has been turning out some pretty darn good stuff, especially when you consider the amount of money that you're paying for it. And the first model is the Heidi Blacksmith Number no. 1. So it's their, they're working their way into fixed blades a bit more. They're primarily known for their flippers. Um, but if, the, if this is any indication of the way they're going, I'm excited to see more. You've got a D2 steel blade, about 3.15 inches. It is a flat grind with a satin finish. And there's a couple of different versions. We've got this version here with, with dual G10 handles. You've got an inlay or a sort of a bolster area here and a couple of different color options for the main part of the handle itself. I've been racking my brain. It's not a dovetail joint. There's some, some name for this, but I can't quite remember it. So that's something that you guys could answer for me in the comments if you can. We've got some nice, two nice mosaic pins there, which is nice and classy, and a good lanyard tube as well. As far as thickness, I think we're... I haven't measured this, but just looking at it, it looks to be about an eighth of an inch. And it comes with a Kydex sheath. Now this is a black Kydex affair, and what you see is what you get. There's a drain hole here, but there's no belt hardware, and there's no neck lanyard as well. So you're going to have to bring that along for the ride yourself if you want to carry it in one of those fashions. In addition to those G10 versions, there's also a carbon fiber G10 laminate version. And you can see those layers of G10 kind of provide some topography to this handle. And that reveals that there's a little bit of a swell this way, but not too much. It's more just kind of rounded over. I shouldn't say swell. Um, it's more just rounded over a little bit and contoured. Because if you look at it from the top, it is fairly thin and you don't get that bulge out there. But this is a, an EDC utility knife. It would make a good caping knife for hunters. Um, and just smaller utility tasks is where this is really going to shine. So you don't really need a full, big, girthy handle. Um, even if you're doing kind of whittling, you know, I might wish for a little bit more, it, it, you know, a little bit more grip when you're really bearing down. But then you got to remember, you know, old timers used to whittle with their slip joint pocket knives all the time. And this is honestly a little bit more grip than a lot of those ever had. So take that with a grain of salt anyway. As far as prices go on these models, we're at 94 for the G10 version and 102 for the carbon fiber. So next up is something that's more along the lines of what they're known for, and this is the buoy tie flipper. And this is just a really cool shape. I mean, it's not a cleaver, kind of the, the pocket cleaver has kind of become the de facto big bold blade shape in the last couple of years. But with a, a big aggressive clip point like this, I think this is even more swoopy sexy, as I like to say sometimes. I mean, check out the lines on that. You got the spine of the handle flows nicely into the upsweep of the blade. You got the sweep of the clip, a nice amount of belly. Overall, just a really cool aerodynamic shape. But what's really cool about this, there's a few different versions, but this one in particular is my favorite. You've got bronze anodized titanium bolsters, and you do have a nice uh, frame lock there as well. Some really good scalloping on the, on the edge of that too. Makes it real easy to grab with your thumb, close. Bearings in the pivot, as you would expect, especially at the price of these, which uh, this is actually $259. 
but the inlays are what really make this cool. This is a gold shred carbon fiber. So it's, it's when you look close, there's flecks of gold in there and shredded bits of carbon fiber. It's a real random pattern. So it's not orderly like you would see on something like the CJRB there. And that gold really brings out the anodization of the titanium. Now you can also get that gold shred with a plain titanium bolster and you can get a plain titanium version with marbled carbon fiber inlays as well, which is another really cool material that's been, it's been really making a splash the last couple of years. Uh, and the blade itself is, is good enough to back up the cool handle materials as well. We've got M390 steel, horizontal finish on the flats, and we've got a cool satin finish, like a real silky kind of finish to the, to the ground portions of the blade. So this is a right-handed knife. You have a milled titanium pocket clip right there, single position, right side tip up, and really cool um, backspacer as well. You've got some nice little milling uh, grooves on there, and it just looks really cool. And man, I, I just can't say how, enough how much I love the way this gold shred looks, especially against these, these bronze anodized versions. So that Best Tech was pretty shouty, and now we've got something that's a lot more stealthy and blacked out. This is the Browse Blades Pat McDaddy Flipper, and we've got this new variant that's joining the lineup. This is a stainless steel frame lock knife, and it's got blacked out handles, as I said. And you've got a black coated blade as well that uses D2 blade steel, which Jason Browse is really known for getting a lot of performance out of. Now this is actually a collaboration with Pat McNamara, who is a firearms trainer, who wanted something that would fulfill his rescue needs. So what they've actually done is taken Jason Browse's popular sniper model and modified it to get this blade shape, or overall design, I should say. The tip of the blade drops down so you have a more ro robust point, and that's also because of that kind of a sheep's foot type of treatment to the tip. You're going to be able to get under things a lot more easily if you need to remove clothing or a seat belt, that sort of thing. You don't want to puncture the, uh, the person you're trying to help with the blade. But to make it even easier, you've actually got an integrated seat belt cutter on the back, and it has its own dedicated blades. This is not the, uh, the blade itself doing the cutting action. You've actually got uh, some inserts there that do the cutting action. You've also got a carbide tipped glass breaker on the back here as well. Now the blade itself rides on the Browse bearing system and it flips quite nicely and it's fairly thick too. Um, really girthy blade, very robust and it feels that way when you hold it in your hand. It's ready to get some good work done for sure. This one right here sits at $199, but you can spend a little bit less money on other versions of this knife and you can find them all at the links that are going to be in the description. And that way you can get this same performance for a little bit less money than that if you don't need that blacked out non-reflective surface. So next up is real steel and we've got both a new model and we've got updates to some existing models as well. Uh, first one I'll talk about I don't actually have in front of me and that's the G5 Metamorph. We've got a new subdued green handle color available for that. But we've also got the new Pelican Flipper. Now this is another of a, in the trend we've been seeing a lot of lately of very well made but fairly affordable knives that are using D2 steel to keep the price down a little bit. We're at $68 for this knife. So we've got a stonewashed finish on that D2 blade itself and a stonewashed finish on the stainless steel frame lock portion of the handle as well. And despite being stainless, it's actually milled out from the inside. You've got some nice relief that takes a bit of weight away. So you don't get that over, like an overly burdensome feel from this knife. It feels like it's a lighter material like aluminum or even titanium carries really nicely because of that. You've got G10 on the front with a really cool milling pattern going on. You've got some diagonal lines here as well as some different angles as you move further back and this kind of creates a ridged effect where it goes up and back, up and back, up and back, or not so much like back but up and down, sort of like small peaks that they don't stick out so much that they're going to be aggressive but they feel really, you know, they feel pretty good in the hand actually. Um, it's not, it's going to add a little bit of grip, but not too much grip because too much grip is a bad thing too. Now this is a bearing based flipper, but in addition to that flipper, you can also open it with the nice hole, the uh, blade cutout they've got there. Now I can't really get this to open with the middle finger flick. I've never been really good at that anyway, um, but the best way to open this I've found is you do a little pinch with your middle finger and your thumb to get it started and then you can just complete the action with your thumb. Other than that, of course, you can just definitely use that flipper and it flips open really nicely.
So you've got a good bit of flipper tab here to provide you with some, uh, some forward protection from your finger sliding forward. It's pretty comfortable though, despite being so abrupt and long. All the edges have been chamfered over quite nicely, so it doesn't dig into you anywhere. Last little detail that I think is pretty cool. You've got some nice uh, anodized bits here, or sorry, engraved bits on the back. You've got a nice little bit of detail on the pocket clip here, which is a little bit broader to begin with. And that's a cool little thing. It's not like a big brand name stamped there, but it's an extra little detail that makes it stand out just a little bit from you know, other standard pocket clips. And you've actually got a, a designer logo at the front here. This was designed in collaboration with um, Aslan Jabineyev, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, uh, but I really like what they came up with here together. So the last new knife for this week is another fixed blade, and it, Real Steel has gone and upgraded their popular Bushcraft fixed blade. Now this is their Bushcraft Plus. We've got a four, roughly four and a half inch blade, and they've gone to a convex grind now, which is really nice. It's a really good overall grind, um, especially for outdoors uses. You are gonna give up just a little bit against, so I could say a flat grind and slicing efficiency, but it's still gonna work very well and you're gonna get a nice bit of strength as well. There is a little, a, a microscopic almost, eh, not microscopic, you can see it with your bare eyes, but a very small secondary bevel here at the edge to make it both easier to sharpen longer term and give it a little bit more strength right at the edge as well. As far as steel, they're using Sandvix 14C28N a really good stainless Swedish steel. And you've got a bit of jimping right here, but it's, uh, the edges of it have been chamfered off. Uh, but the rest of the spine has not been chamfered off. Now being a bushcraft knife, you're probably gonna ask if it can strike a fire steel. Now I haven't tested it because I don't wanna, you know, this is a knife we're selling, so I don't wanna actually try to strike a fire with it. But just judging by the feel, it's not the most crisp spine, but it feels like it probably will strike a fire steel. Uh, just not as effectively as something that has a, a really crisp spine on it. But it should still work, I think. The handles themselves are G10. You can see we've got a nice swell here from the, from the top view down. It feels good in the, in the standard grip like this, but because of where they've positioned the swell and because there's no finger guard, that swell is positioned so that when you choke up, when you're really trying to get right behind the edge, do those really precise feather sticks or really small uh, trap notches, that sort of thing, it fills the hand really nicely and you're gonna be able to get some really good control on that as well. Completing out the knife itself, we've also got a hidden lanyard attachment point here at the pommel. And the back end of that is rounded off nicely, so if you're gonna need to use it for uh, any kind of type of drilling tasks, that's gonna go quite nicely. And as far as thickness, uh, again, I haven't measured this, but just judging by my eyeballs, it looks about 5 30 seconds of an inch. So a nice robust piece overall. It comes with a sheath as well as a couple uh, little drivers as well. You can see on these key rings, we've got some hex, uh, yeah, some hex drivers there. And the sheath itself is nylon, but you have an actual Kydex insert in here as well. So it snaps in and has that positive retention, even without this Velcro loop here at the top. You can see we've got a ton of different attachment options on the back including some extra cordage here on the bottom. And if you do undo this clasp at the front, we've got a pouch too. So you can put a sharpening stone, uh, some fire starting gear, some emergency equipment can live right there with your knife. Overall, that all of these things come together, you get a really robust knife and the price is only $102. So I th I'd say it's a pretty good deal to boot, especially considering uh, how good that sheath system that comes with it is. So last up, we've got a new sharpener from Spyderco. Now this may look at first glance to be sort of a, uh, a morphed sharp maker, uh, but it is a little bit different. The stones themselves, they are using the same material, but this is called the Spyderco Gauntlet. Whereas uh, with the sharp maker, you have a base that everything can kind of break down into. This is designed to be more of something that always lives out, um, especially in the kitchen. This is gonna be, I think, really useful. And this bit right here protects your hand as you hold the base steady and you go through the motions just like you would with a sharp maker uh, to keep your blade, your edges in really good shape. You've got the edges to get started on, and then instead of a flat, these are actually sort of teardrop shaped, or, or you know, oval type, I should say, uh, something along those lines. There's a term for that, I'm sure. You can let us know in the comments. Um, but if you look at the hole it goes into, you've got a couple of different positions where you can place this. And they've designed that so it works in concert with that curved edge so that as you move it to those different spots, you've got fresh surface to use as you go around. 
Now this does come with the fine versions, uh, but you can get the cubic boron nitride rods, which are much more aggressive if you need to do some more reshaping. Those are available for purchase separately. And as far as price on this goes, we're at $52 right now. Last thing I want to talk about is the Work Sharp EDC Micro Sharpener. Now this is available for pre-order right now on our website, but the only way to get it right now, we're actually offering this as a promo item on items or on orders over $95. And you just need to use the promo code WORKSHARP. Uh, but this is only going to last for uh, a limited amount of time after this video goes up. So don't try to use that, you know, a month from now, a year from now or anything and expect that to work. But this is a really cool little unit. It has a couple of uh, two different sides of sharpener. You've got a diamond side as well as a ceramic honing side. And being a work sharp, it has these built in edge angle guides. That's something they're really known for. And in the middle, we've got three Torx bits as well. You can pop that out, pull out your bit, and then it mounts into the tool itself, which is pretty darn cool. This is really small. It'll, it could fit in that fifth uh, jean pocket. I know a lot, we talk a lot about small items that are designed to fit there. This would fit there really well help you keep your edges in tip top shape all the time. And then you can even adjust your pivots or your other parts of your knife, your pocket clip, anything like that on the go. Pretty cool item. And like I said, right now, orders of $95 or more, promo code WORKSHARP, and get one of these right now. Or you can pre-order it and wait until we get in the ones that we're actually gonna be selling. But otherwise, it's the same thing. So that's the new stuff for this week. Make sure to keep sticking around. We're going to be doing videos like this every week. And you can subscribe to our newsletters too if you want to see this stuff even sooner. In the meantime, you can use the links in the description to head over to knifecenter.com to get any of these items. And I, just one more time, I want to pimp our Knife Rewards program. You can sign up for that while you're there. Because as I like to say, you guys have probably heard me on some other videos, if there's anything better than a free or a new knife, screwed that up. Let me start over. If there's anything better than a new knife, it's free money to spend on your next one. David C. Anderson signing off from the Knife Center. See you next time. Just, I don't know. He could get tripped up on this fixed blade. <laughs> mm, don't use that. Did I do this yet? Yes, you did. Would, would any of this require a green screen? If so, let's not do it. Boom.